was that that those funds could be used to pay the tenants rent at housing. And so they wrote checks to the housing authority using that emergency rental money. And I believe there was one large check that was written at the end of, um, I'm not sure if it was 21 or 22, what year that, I don't have any of my information in front of me here. But there was a budget that was set at $3.5 million. I believe that was the amount of the check. Well, through 2021 20, and 22, that was pretty much completely spent. But then in 23, I believe there was an additional over $4 million that was spent in that fund that was basically technically an over expenditure in that fund. What exactly those, what was spent, um, I did send, I believe there was another meeting, an HHS meeting that Mike um, Novotny, who was the lawyer called, and I sent him a detailed list of all the expenditures that were in that fund. And so I believe that's probably the biggest issue is the over expenditure of four to, and, and I'd say probably closer to $5 million that was in that fund. And how that they were able to do that is with that ERAP program, there were funds that were unexpended of about $7 million. And those are needing to be sent back to the um, treasury. To That was a program that was by the uh, treasury department. And those funds got put into the general account because there were outstanding checks that should, um, that once we sent those back to treasury, we couldn't risk that they would clear the account. So we closed the treasury checking account, or excuse me, closed the ERAP checking account and put that into the general fund. And I think that is how we were able, how if someone was able to spend those funds when they should not have even been spent. Are there any specific questions? That's just a general overview of what I know happened specifically in that fund 86. Is there, which is um, considered to be uh, rental income is considered to be something that's called program income and it needs to be spent on housing items, which Noah could probably answer a little better than I on what those expenditures were specifically for. And I believe they were all expended on housing projects. I just don't know the specifics. Councilman uh, Jumping Eagle. So can, um, Ms. Peterson, can you repeat again how much was overspent? I believe it was probably closer to $5 million. I don't have the exact amounts in front of me here, so I, I can't tell you, but I would say it was probably a, around $5 million. Seems to me like the 8.6 were the total expenditures and 3.5 was the budget. And then uh, one last thing is, you have access now is uh does the housing have money in their uh their locks that is something that i believe there are is there is funding but um the comptroller at the time at the beginning of the year dale bear saves life he was the one that requested drawdowns from the system that's called locks and he drew down um quite a bit of money when we when he knew that we were needing to send that seven million dollars back to treasury and 
that seven mil or the, and I don't remember how much the drawdowns were. I think that was brought to one of the meetings. Um, Tanya Garnez brought a report that showed how much was drawn down in January and the first part of February. And those monies are the Nahasda monies, which is the main grant or the main funding source for housing. And the total of that grant is like 13.8 million. And that funding needs to last housing the entire year of 2024. So my next question, and we can all, we can all, we, we all know the answer, but we need to hear it from you. Is housing in a financial crisis right now? My personal opinion would be yes, they are. Because of the over expenditure and not being able to draw down, they're going to have to really minimize the budget to only what is critical to continue to operate and or find other funding sources to help them get through this. And I think they, what I had suggested is that figure out what your budget really needs to be and try and budget and make up for those lost funds. Now, how I, you know, Tom Allen can help figure out if we can use funding to cover, Nahasda funding to cover some of those expenditures that were spent in Fund 86, but I don't know that. Okay, thank you. Councilwoman Halverson. Good afternoon, Ms. Peterson. So I think as uh, not only as HHS member, but as a council representative, um, we've been requesting for bank statements. Um, I think we'd like to see a previous audit, the last previous audit that we actually have, because it sounds like we're also in an audit issue with the housing. I thought we were current with that. Um, and then any kind of written documentation and accounting on that four or $5 million that is lost. Um, you know, it was mentioned earlier that there was a miscellaneous item of $4 million um, under the headline miscellaneous. We'd like to know where that, where those funds went. Um, and the last thing is how, how does the process work for that Nahazda? Um, from start to finish so that I guess apparently I don't know if Noah even knows how that process works or what but if he's shaking his head yes that he does know but it sounds to me that you're stating that those drawdowns are already depleted so maybe we also need a financial accounting on that drawdown as well you know what and I What's most concerning to me is all of this so-called lost funds from this program. And that's, you know, and the result of it is this um, termination, this, um, I get, for me, I don't think it was rightful termination of employees. Chair. Uh, I asked a question. Oh, so. okay, sorry. Can you... Repeat the question you would like me to answer. I'm sorry. So I was requesting some documentation. Are were you able to provide that to us? So documentation of uh, the over expenditure. Yeah, over expenditures of the four million or five million bank statements, previous audits just anything written documentation because we have no written documentation of any financial um, accounting that's happened with housing funds. We were told, oh, we were given falsified documents. That person gave us falsified documents. Oh, this person gave us falsified documents. There's nothing 
truthful on what we're presented as a board or a council. I just need some type of facts, something that's legitimate that we're not being told is false. So what I can help Noah and Tanya provide to you is total expenditures for the year of twenty night of twenty twenty three which I think will help show that. Um, like I said, I did provide to uh, Mr. Novotny a detailed listing of all the expenditures from January 1st of 2020 to February 14th when this first came to light of all the expenditures that were in the fund that we're talking about. And I don't believe that, I, I believe that they were all housing expenditures, but I think they were just over expenditures. I personally have not sat down and looked. I just did a quick report of here is what they are and here's a summary by category. You know, what was salaries, what was benefits, what was... um vehicles, what was construction, that type of just a, a quick overview when I and I know it could help me. I don't remember if that was a, I believe it was an HHS committee meeting that they were meeting on in well, February. That'll, okay, that'll be really great because Mr. Novotny has failed to get us that um, documentation. So that would be great information to go over at the next HHS board meeting or something in the future, hopefully soon, so that we can see the actual facts. Thank you. And, and then um, I had suggested for Tanya now as interim CFO to bring to the HHS committee a listing of all grant funds, including that program income, which is what we're talking about. That Fund 86 is considered program income, including the program income so that the board can see all income and all expenditures in a summary format. And then if there's additional questions, then Tanya could have the detail, Tanya and Noah could have the detail that they could answer those questions at that point in time. And yeah. I believe we we did somewhat of a, a summary report um, Tanya had presented that at one of the previous committee or HHS committee meetings. You know, that'd be really great to be provided that um, financial information, um, written financial information. Um, I know we'd like a breakdown of that miscellaneous account because it sounds like that's where a lot of this mess started from is that mis miscellaneous account and then covering for that 4 million and covering it for covering it. And um, so I would definitely appreciate that being broke down. Thank you. Okay. Councilman Ghostbear. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm gonna pass Anna. Anna asked the questions I was gonna ask. Thank you. Okay, Councilman Jumpney. So Noah, whose job is it at housing to make sure them accounts don't get overspent like that? Who should be watching them accounts? And it was my understanding that it was the comptroller. Okay, uh, were, were you were you done? Okay, so it'd be Councilman Lunderman. Okay, so <clears throat> I kind of think it's unfair that, you know, Mr. Holder's only been in there as CEO for, for a week, if that. And a lot's being thrown that direction. And the real, the real dude we should be hearing from is sitting right back there. But here we are. We gotta wait 20 days 
we might as well jump right into it. We're talking about everything that all pertains to why we terminated Mr. Bear Runner. So, I mean, that's just what I have. I mean, <laughs> do we jump right into it? Wait 20 days. You know, we're this far. But I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Who's above the whole department? And who is the one with authority to say no? From what I, what, what I experience or what I've heard, what I've seen is that there was nobody. It was pretty much operating without a CEO. I'll stop right there. Councilwoman Little Hawk Weston. Was that you? you? Know, um, oh, okay. you know, I will answer what uh, Mr. Lunderman, Councilman Lunderman just asked. You know, we just got done accepting a complaint earlier on Mr. from Mr. Ramon Bearrunner. So he refused, he's not gonna talk until the hearing or whenever we have it. So that's where that is. And ultimately, when it all comes down to it, the board is responsible. We are responsible for everything that is happening today at that housing office. Because we wanted to sit as a board, right? How many months ago did we ask that we put in three member board, five member board, but it never went anywhere. So we stayed as the board and now today we're dealing with this issue. So ultimately it comes back to us as a board, all 16 of us that are on that board. And we said that when we first started addressing this issue a couple of weeks ago, we said, who's gonna be held accountable? Us. And guess what? All the people are calling us, texting us, wanting answers to why they're terminated. That's the answers tonight, Council. So that today we took action, we, we accepted the complaint from Mr. Bear Runner, and we're gonna have a special hearing. I think it's one of us who made the motion to accept that, Mr. Lunderman did. And there was a second and we ran it and now it's gonna be set up. So now we can't talk about that. But the second thing is we are ultimately responsible. 16 of us that sit on that board. That's the way I look at it. Cause that's what was always told to us when we, there's a charter, you sit on that board, then ultimately you're responsible for whatever happens to that. That's why when public safety was a charter, we gave it to a board. We didn't want to address that. But when they fell into financial crisis, how many years ago, we took the charter back and we put it under the law and order committee. But today, this is under us, 16 of us that sit on the HHS committee. So ultimately we're responsible for it. So tonight, you know, I don't know what kind of solutions we're coming up with tonight to address these employees' this issue. I don't know where that can go because we heard today from Mr. Peter, Ms. Uh, Peter, uh, Pete Peterson, uh, Jean, and she told us now the financial crisis that we're in. And all I can say today, and one of the recommendations, and we said, we don't want HUD to know about what's going on. I remember I heard that too. Don't want HUD to know what's going on, but now HUD knows about it. So HUD's gonna come down and meet with us and uh, find out what's going on with the housing office where all the funding they give us to run housing, they're gonna address us on it. We've been through it already. Some of us, we know what's gonna happen. So tonight, I just wanna say, you know, there's no solution right now. But I want to say, you know, when we take it to the board, we need to recommend maybe even HUD to come in and give us some technical assistance 
to help us because we don't want to lose this program. It's too vital to our to our members of the Oglala Sioux tribe. Everybody relies on housing to fix homes, to build homes. And tonight, that should be the very number one priority right now on the table is the houses, the homes. You know, I feel bad tonight that these employees, 50 something of them are been let go, terminated. But, you know, it's really hard to say today that, you know, we we made a decision. That decision was made by Mr. Holder, along with Mr. Yellowboy and Ms. Whitehorse, to look at our employees and cut. Now, I'm going to just put that out there. It wasn't made by 16 board members sitting in that room and looking at the restructuring plan. We didn't look at a restructuring plan. I'm kind of tired of that now. We have too much, too much politics into that housing. And I feel bad that, God rest his soul, Mr. Ironclad probably turned over in his grave, seeing the way the housing is running now. So why is politics involved in it? Toshka, your grandpa. And you sit on this board. A lot of things you have to learn. Your grandpa would not want us to be involved in into that housing. So today I have to say that tonight because it breaks my heart to know where that housing is at today. So it's not a good decision today that we have to to sit here and listen to the these all these employees that spoke out about no longer having a a job, but you know the way I all my dad used to always say, you know when one door closes another door opens, and I look at that. It's not the end of the world for you, you know. A lot of you are qualified, you got education, experience, and there's jobs out there you can get. You just got to go out and apply for it. And today we have to look at it that way. And today we have to think about the homes and how are we going to bring more homes to our people. So we should be thinking about that today. Sometimes we have to say these things might not sit right with people, but we have to say it as tribal leaders because today it's hurting us. Somebody texted me and said, you know, well, the Ushika people, the poor people, we're living here, living like this. So you leaders need to think about that. So his job is tough. He's going to have to do what needs to get done to stabilize housing, to do that. But I'd like to, at our board meeting, hopefully we'll come back with a restructuring plan and we can move forward. But HUD probably already knows about it. And I'm sure they're going to come down and they'll meet with us. So I think we need to, Mr. Chair, if there's no more housing employees that are going to speak, I think we need to either, you know, recess or go on to our next item. Cause I really think there's so much that has to get done for our tribe. And I, we've been sitting here, but I want to thank the employees that came today and to speak to us and let us know. Because one thing somebody mentioned to me on the text said, you know, communication Communication starts from the top down and from the bottom up. Should have happened. Maybe we'll do better next time. We'll follow the policies. It really makes it hard, but you know, even us as council need to stay out of it. Let them run the housing. Let them do their job. You know, I really feel bad today because it's hard for us to to hear that and, and to even to even wanna say, yeah, that's what we should do because it's not gonna happen. We wanna still be involved in it. So we're involved and we're gonna be the ones to take the brunt of this and we're gonna have to help Mr. Holder to stabilize housing. Thank you.
Yes, on, on that note, you know, uh, and, and I believe it was Councilman Still that uh, mentioned that, uh, you know, the, the the tribe, this was the first ever board for housing nationwide. So I think that was from uh, Councilman Still. And we need to remember that we need to set an example uh, in, in, in that effort. So just, uh, and then I sure hate to lose that e uh, either. So, uh, we need to think about those things. Um, one thing I, uh, if I'm going to let, uh, take, take these last two, um, questions. And then if, if we're done with our, I'm sorry, we have another, uh, uh, three questions. I'm sorry. And if we're done with, uh, the, the folks in the crowd, um, we'll adjourn or not adjourn but recess till tomorrow so with that i'm gonna go ahead and uh let uh councilman lunderman speak and then followed by councilman jumping eagle thank you so you know i guess if we're coming to a, a closing on this discussion then you know i just want to thank um our cpa for for coming here today this evening and you know it's uh, nice to meet you and you know, thank you for the information that you provided. And now like, you know, just kind of to respond to, to uh, Sonia, you know, to me, you know, all the, all the respect, you know, and I um, accept, you know, everything you say. And, you know, I, like I said, I am a part of the HHS committee now, but like I said, I was not there. And I do agree that, you know, yes, you know, the HHS is, is, it should be accountable or involved as well, but to an extent. And, you know, we say, let, let them do their job, but then look where we're at. And that, that's just what, what I'm, I'm trying to grasp is, is, you know, we, we had a CEO, we've had multiple CEOs. And I agree, you know, my grandfather's probably here today or looking down and he's probably pretty, pretty, pretty sad, you know, not anybody can speak for him, but just based off of the work and the heart that he had for the people. I mean, it's easy to say those things because we know that he was for the people and, and, and always appreciating his employees. He knew that they were out there doing the job, that everybody in that place was doing their job to help make that place what it was when he was in there. But now, like I said, to see it where it's at, it hurts my heart too. To see the employees having to get laid off. And, you know, and like I said, I wasn't there two years ago, five years ago. Now this is my first term. And like I said before, I wasn't in there during this time, that whole first year, but I came in and I'm doing all that I can. I do have a lot to learn, but I, from what I've seen, from what I've heard, from the meetings that I was in, you know, I'm. that's why I'm here today and I'm standing up I'm trying to help get it back on track. You know, I'm not trying to be no superhero, but you know, I'll do my best to try to get it back on track. And I can't do it myself. It's gonna take each and every one of us in here to be in the same mindset and to be heading in the same direction. And that starts from up here, HHS board, CEO, finances, department heads, all the way down. Everybody's got to be on the same page, but you know what? It's not. There's feud, feuding that's been going on in that place. You know, people now, you know, I guess, don't want to work together. Ramon knew that. But what's been done? Just avoiding things. Where is that working together? And that's the only way things are going to work from here on out is if we all get on the same page 
and work together. That's the bottom line. A lot of different opinions, a lot of different mindsets come in here. But at the end of the day, like I said, it's all for the people. And we all need to be heading in the, in the same direction, and that's in the right direction. Not the wrong. That's where I believe where it was going, because now we have all this stuff going on. So, chairs over there, hitting his wrist, and <laughs> time check, you know. But we could ramble on and on and on. But like I said, what hurts me is employees. Now they're, it's not their fault that they got laid off. So, thank you. Councilman Jeff and Eagle. Yeah, real, real quick, thank you. You know, I don't know if we're coming out of here with a satisfactory uh, um, answer for the employees that were laid off. I mean, I think we, and, and you know, it, it sucks because we all have friends, family who work who got laid off and it does, but we heard from the CPA about the financial crisis. We heard somebody asked Noah if we can put workers back together, if there's back to work and Noah said, no. I mean, how, how, how are we going to, how are we going to help the employees? However, but you know, and then I want to answer to something Sonia said, you know, she said, uh, we're all responsible as the board for this financial crisis we're in at housing, right, Sonia? You said as the board, yeah, all 16 of us. Wow. Shouldn't all 16 of us be on that complaint too? As the board, if we're all, if we're all responsible for that, you know, you can't have it one way and then have it a different way. Us five acted as the capacity of the board, which is the HHS committee. You know, if we're going to start picking and choosing, choosing when we want to be responsible and not, you know, that don't, that don't make sense to me. Thank you. Okay, Councilman Cross. Thank you, Chair. Um, um, Ms. Juanita shirt, but um, I have another solution. One is to sell all those pickups that they bought. <laughs> That's what got us in trouble, you know. Um, the other thing that kind of really bothers me with housing is that, you know, I, I, I kind of believe in karma. And, you know, housing displaced a lot of mothers and children, put them out on the streets, you know, nowhere to go. I know it was meth related, but they had not, those kids had nothing to do with that. Now, I kind of think that maybe it came back on us. Now look where we're at now. So with that, I'll turn it over to Juanita. Good evening. I'll make it short. Um, I didn't come up here to criticize anybody or take a look at what who did and what happened and all that. I came here to listen to all of you as well as all the people out there because I'm representing the community standpoint of what's going on. In my community, yeah, they have a lot of concerns. They have people that got laid off. They also have misplacements of homes and houses that aren't being done. Everything that comes with this um, employment agency is what I call housing because majority of it we all know is an employment agency and not really fixed on focusing on homes. When we do get a home, everybody's so thankful because we got a home. But I want to say to all of you, I want to encourage all of you, okay, you all know what the problems are now. You all know what happened. You all know what's going on. And maybe a little bits and pieces will come to you. But you know what? You're all capable of solving it, too. And I always tell you guys, I never want to give up that faith in all of you. Because I know it can happen. And I know that, you know, in one program a long time ago, and we did run it, and we had this crisis in that program, too, we had to take a look at all kinds of avenues. And one of the avenues was... We gave our employees reduction in force, and we didn't have a reduction in force policy at that time. But there was no money. There was no money to save that program unless the whole team, the housing, the communities, and everybody worked together at keeping it for the community members, for the children, for the families. You know, um, we live in a high rate of poverty, and our kids and our homes are real important to us. And 
Our home is the major important thing for our children. And I always bring that back to everybody working with CPS. They need to have a home in order to flourish and be a successful young child and into an adult. So I just want to say to all of you, you know, your, your decisions count. They matter to all of us out there. And I know that one thing that when we had reduction in force, also we did reduction in force. We did it for every employee. If we had 100% funding, it would be okay for everybody to have a livelihood of their job. But if they were under 25%, 40%, whatever percent that was of that money that we can't pay out anymore, then everybody took the hit. And so that everybody was able to be employed, not at the lavishing rate of 20 bucks an hour, but at a rate of 15 bucks an hour maybe, and that would save a lot of employee, employees' jobs. And even our head people had to take the cut because why should they have the luxury salaries when their employees, their people out there are suffering? Why can't they all share the effort? The second thing was all assets were taken a look at and which could be liquidated and sold to pay that debt sooner. So I, you know, and then obviously, I don't know if housing has loan, loan capability, but you know, pay it back 10% at a time and any revenues that come in should be at interest bearing accounts. These things I know you all know already, but just there's nobody to set the plan. And so that plan is really, is, that strategic plan is really an important device that needs to happen right away. So, you know, I'll pray for all of you. I pray that y'all find the answers and soon because our people out there deserve to have maintenance. Maintenance are things done for their home. Yesterday, I had a family at American Horse Creek across from where Austin lives. Their um, oven gave up and their propane line was leaking and they didn't know who to call because nobody was available to help them. And we had to send this day labor worker out there. And, you know, these emergency situations that family could have blew up. And I just would, cannot believe that we can't help these families. So just continue your efforts. And I know we're closing for the day. So I just want to say, don't give up. You can do it and you will. So don't give up and continue to do the best that you can for all, the, all of these people out here. Thank you. Oh, what we love for them words, Juanita. Okay, so uh, lunch, or I guess uh, dinner is still on the way, uh, but it's getting late and you can hang around and get your lunch to go or dinner to go. Uh, but I think we should uh, recess for today. Here. Okay, so we'll resume here at uh, 10 o'clock, uh, same, same place, same time. Here, yes, uh, the lunch was, was already ordered, so we're gonna come back here. And supper is on the way if you want. I don't know what is up there. They got it from the bullies over here. Okay. It was shipped on Fridays, I think. Oh. <laughs> steak. I heard steak. <laughs> so thank you, Consul. Thank you for your patience. You know, there was a much needed conversation between uh uh the council here and uh, the people and the employees, especially, and to the listening to to the listening audience, you know, uh, uh, you know, it, today was a good day, you know, uh, and I'm and I'm going to say this for the record, we didn't go into executive, so good job. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs>